Good morning and welcome. We're back in our, our kitchen, uh, painting from home, as most of you probably are too. And I am focusing for these few weeks on what's within my own two kilometre radius, so that that's what I'm paying attention to and seeing what the, the visual options for, for paintings I might do now or develop in the future. So when I go for my walk every day, I'm carrying my camera and taking some photos and then focusing on that for now, just to connect with, you know, our surroundings right now, this week, where we are. So the photo I'm going to work from today is from Greystones. And I'm going to start, as I have before, with a small sketch to show you the compositional, you know, objectives that I've got with this. And I'll turn then to my oil painting. So I've got two grayscale pens, a lighter and a darker. And I start just with a, a very rough outline. I've got my, the big shapes, start with that. I've got my horizon. Then I've got this Z of land coming in from here, coming back out, coming back, and then going to the horizon. So see this Z possibility. That's really what interests me in a composition like that. Diagonals have a very forceful energy compared to horizontals or verticals. They bring the eye into the painting. So I always find those when I can and use them to best advantage. So even within this then, so I see the big shape. Here's the sea, the sky and the land. And then I divide the land into its segments. So I've got one that goes right across here. This one comes back here. So I've got one, two, three areas. And within that then, I've got some darker shapes here. So I start to develop each area with some more detail. And this foreground area is divided into the green of the grass and the shape of the rocks. There's some more shadow here. And a more distant horizon. So with that, I've been able to take my photo and understand the, the main basics of my composition which is bringing the eye in and through to the distant horizon here. So every shape within that is drawing the eye in and through like that. So this gives me a starting point to start to see that. So I'm just painting on oil paper. I've got some colors laid out. They're from my normal palette that I use as my base palette. I've got um, my cool colours, indigo, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, and two greens, viridian and sap. And here I've got my warm colours, I've got burnt sienna and cadmium yellow white, and I've got white, and I've got some sans odour in a little container to dip my brush. So moving on from the sketch I've just done, I then take my brush and start with those big shapes again. I'm going to lift that just a little bit. Okay, so I'm dipping into the sand odor, making a pool of liquid blue, a little bit gray to that. And I'm going to find my horizon first. And then the other big shapes. So this rock is coming in from about here and actually going the whole way across at that angle. And then from that, the next one comes out. And you notice simply where is it in space? This is more than halfway across 
the page and that too has that strong so you got these strong directional forces there and then about here it turns it goes the other way and then you've got the horizon the trees that are there and the clouds And then I can refine these shapes as I come back to paint them. But those are my big shapes. Sky, sea, distant land, middle land, and foreground. And I'm actually going to bring this foreground up a little bit, a bit higher, like that. Okay. So the next stage is then to simply block in a color for each of those shapes, very transparent and very loose. So I'll start with the sky and just adding some more blue into that. And towards the horizon, it's a bit paler. I'm going to add some cerulean. And the sea is darker blue at the horizon. I'm going to add a little bit of indigo to that blue. And it becomes more green as it comes closer to shore. So I'm just going to wet this first. I'm going to add a little bit of viridian to that mix. A little bit more. And a little bit of sap as it comes closer to the shore again. And then here, there's a large patch of grass. I'm just going to go straight into sap green. Add a little bit of cadmium yellow light to that. It's very bright. I'm going to move to a bigger brush. And the only liquid I'm using is my sans odor pinner. And I'm going to do it over the whole thing. I'm not going to pick my way around these small rocks. And there's a lovely patch of yellow green right there in the distance that's connecting with this that's further back around there and the rocks are a greyish brown I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to this blue a little bit of that yellow and start to get an idea of these the shapes. And here I'm being a bit more, I'm watching pretty much each shape more carefully than when I first just lashed it in. And a bit more blue to that. I'm not adding any white yet, I'll do that a little bit later. The beach is very light brown, adding a tiny bit of white there. And the dark green of the trees, I'll add a bit of sap to this. I'm not dealing really going to worry about details such as houses and that. And 
and then some more of these bluish grey rocks to setting some blue and brown together. More blue. So I call that stage two where I've done the drawing, I've covered all the white in the canvas and I've got a general, very abstracted and very loose interpretation of the scene. And now I can go back and add much more paint and strengthen it a bit. So I'm going to start with the sky, cleaning my brush. I'm going to start, it's cloudy, but there's patches of blue. I'm going to start with that darker blue at the top, I'm adding a bit of white at this point. And coming in at the top like that. And at the horizon it's paler. I'm going into the cerulean, adding white to that. And a bit more white. So as not to bring that up into the sky, I come down at it from on top and then wipe my brush when I come up. And there's some darker clouds there. So I got my grayer mix, a little bit of indigo, a bit more white, more blue. And these clouds across there. And they look heavy at first, but I'm going to be adding a layer of white then on top of this. And I'm observing the pretty much diagonal sweep of the clouds. They're not flat across the horizon. They're moving uh, across with a diagonal kind of energy. So I'm dipping now into pure white. I go into where it's lighter. And all soft edges. Cleaning my brush back for more white. Cleaning, coming in again. And a bit of that blue grey. softening all those edges so there's nothing hard there. Then I'm cleaning my brush and coming back to the sea. So I'm getting a fresh pool here of blue mixed with a little bit of green, a little bit of indigo. Coming straight across like that. And working this down, I'm going to keep adding a bit more green to that mix. And a bit more green, and now I'm going to introduce some white. And more white. And again, I don't want to bring the rocks up in there, so I'm coming down from here and working that around them. And a bit of sap is going into that, and more white, for the brighter green right here at the shoreline. And 
I learned there is some white foam. I learned that with the knife while it's wet. So I got my knife, small one, reaching straight into the white and just along the edge and wiping it clean, coming back for some more, just along the edge. And a bit more. And I can do it along this shore here too. So just pure white. And I'm following that same line of water. Like that. And you pretty much only get one chance to do that. After that, you start mushing it around and it mixes with the sea and turns into a pale blue instead of being a clear line of white. So one nice firm mark is pretty much all you need to do that. Okay, so I'll move from there to these rocks and I can go in now a bit stronger. So I'm getting that brown, green, earthy color. So I'm going to mix here, sap green, and burnt sienna. And a bit more green in that mix. And I'm going to use my small brush then to just work that in and direct it a little bit. And now I'm adding some white to that greenish mix. I'm coming in with some of these rocks here. And if you're trying to mix a color that's there, you start with what is it most like? Is it mostly green or brown or gray? Start with that and then you ask, is it lighter or darker? You keep on adding a little bit at a time until you get to more or less the colour you're looking for. I want this to be a little bit brighter, so I'm adding a little bit more white and a tiny bit of yellow to that for these rocks. See the difference? See this long line of the wall there, just going into my dark here. And I'm going back into my deeper green here in the distance, sap and a little bit of that blue. And taking some of that off just to lighten it a bit. And I'm going back into the grass, so I'm reaching for my sap green. And it's deeper green here and a bit more yellow there, catching the light. So I'm coming in with a deeper green. And my brush strokes are imitating the grass. It's pushing up, it's not just smooth, flat. So I'm, you know, pushing the grass up with my brush.
And it's a bit more gold here. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to that. A bit more of the yellow. Yeah, more like that. And some shadow even within this green. I'm going to add some more blue and grey into it. More grey. And some white into this grey. Now to get some of these stones. I'm just going to intensify the, the wave a little bit against the shore again. I'll take some of this out. some shadows of these rocks. And with that, I'll just see how it looks. Um, bearing in mind, it's really intended to just be a very loose sketch. Okay, so we'll do something more tomorrow. In the meantime, if you have any questions, anything that you'd like me to do for one of my demos, uh, any comments, just write it in the comment box below and I'll answer you there. Have a good day, everybody. See you later. Bye.